The little title of the word the Lord let in my heart today is called The Burden to Climb. The Burden to Climb. Over the holiday season, my family and I, we got a chance to climb a little rock called Sigiriya. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about our climb so that you understand this entire story. But climbing is something that we teach you after almost one and a half to two years of studying the kingdom of God. I'm believing that your eyes are open, that you're seeing the Bible in a different manner now. And I pray this little word will encourage you to truly climb, okay? And to carry a burden like that song we sang, holding on to that little rugged cross, okay? So the first scripture I want to speak to is from Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. A little verse, okay? So, we planned this trip to go to Sigiria. And uh, as you know, I have a pretty big family. The day came to climb. And a few of our family members, even before we started, said we are not going. They quit. Okay? Some of them are gym buffs and all that. They do all the cardio and you name it. But these fellows quit. No chance. Okay? So the others said, let's go. Now the others are climbing. Halfway point, there's a bunch who said, we need a pause. We need a break. Then hearty, now tired. You understand this, huh? This is the mountain climbing model. Now, when one person says that, what happens? A few more other fellows come and join the club. Now, so many fellows are saying, hi, you enough. Now, can't climb anymore. Tired. Remember this, huh? The devil was an angel earlier. Yes, they come in good spirit, but finally they join the club. And there were a few who said, no, nothing doing. We are going to climb. So now when you climb, you have to look up. You're not looking down. No. You're climbing up. But when you climb this little rock called Sigiriya, there were a few injuries, cramps, you know, bruises here, there. It happens. You hear the walk of faith, huh? It's not an easy road. But somehow we gathered everybody who came at the halfway point and pushed them and pulled them, and we got to the top of the mountain. Okay? And we made it. And uh, on the top of the mountain, the entire discussion changed. Okay, so keep this story in your mind. I'll help you understand as we go through the scripture. So Jesus is teaching at the bottom and there's a crowd. And when there's a crowd, he decides, I want to start to climb the mountain. Bethany is also like this. Okay? On the 28th of May, we are planning a big service that's Pentecost Sunday. Uh, they're going to do a very big service to celebrate our 22nd year anniversary. We are seeing the crowds. But unlike politicians, we are not going to jump into the crowd. We want to take the crowd higher. Amen. Amen. Because we are seeing the crowd. We are different. So Jesus decides to go. Now when Jesus climbs the mountain, not everybody climbs. Only a few climb. You understand this? Some people say, Ayyo, this Bible is in the morning. Big botheration. Men can't be bothered with this. We don't have time for the Bible verse in the morning. We want you to climb. Now, the disciples who climbed, or the few who climbed, got the Sermon on the Mount. They got what Jesus was teaching. The people on the bottom, we don't know what happened. Okay? So, my first thought to you is, climb. Don't pause or quit. Quitting is very easy. Everybody can quit. I'm asking you, don't quit. We are here to help you. Don't quit your marriage. Don't quit your relationships. If you're an addiction, quit it for God's sake. But don't quit things that you can do. Because your children are watching. You're missing out opportunities in life when you quit. Okay? And when you climb, at a halfway point, if you feel, I need a pause, my suggestion to you is don't make it a pause break. 
make it a pace break you understand a pace break you press at that time say god i want to go a little bit more you find people who will encourage you to go the extra mile you reach out to people and say hey come on i'm stuck here in the middle how do i go the next little bit man is finished if he quits don't quit you look up you look up you look up and you start to climb that mountain now when you go to the top of the mountain things changed so when we got to top of sigiriya of course one or two people were tired but you know the discussions completely changed everybody was taking a selfie everybody was looking at the 360 the surrounding view that we had they forgot the difficulty this is what happens okay you forget when you get there you forget they're talking to other people sharing water talking to them asking them how they came suddenly your entire discussion your thinking pattern has changed the perception on the mountain is very different to the perception on the valley once you get there it changes okay so bible has so many things that happen on the mountain if you look at moses he got the 10 commandments on the mountain he got the law by the way who broke the first 10 commandments anybody knows god sorry <laughs> yeah so the people down there they broke it but moses literally broke it also okay but hey moses had it we have elijah who was on the mountain called fire no but he was also a person who struggled he ran away after that we have a peter paul sorry we have peter james and john who saw moses and elijah on the mountain transfiguration we saw abraham who climbed the mountain and had a replacement for the sacrifice he was going to make okay so when you get to this mountain when you get to the top of the mountain climbers you know all climbers you experience in the walk of faith you experience the word differently like moses did you experience fire like elijah did you experience vision like peter and the other disciples did and you experience salvation like abraham did and jesus did for all of us so my encouragement to you is now please start to climb start to climb okay climb is not easy there is a old story i'm sure you all heard of this but let me remind you there was a little boy who was lost crying oh my god i'm lost i don't know how to get there and he meets a old farmer the farmer is asking young man why are you crying he says i'm sorry uncle i'm lost i don't know how to get back home so the farmer says do you remember telephone number no do you remember bus number no i don't know how to get home what do you remember i remember the cross farm uncle if you point me to the cross and if i go there i can find my way home and the farmer says hey look up there that's the cross and the little kid runs to the church because he knows where the church is and from there onwards he can find his way home amen he point people to the cross okay i hear this a lot in our singular service mainly they tell the kids palliya gava hambum come near the church bethany rajagiri is a center point a lot of people come even for my son his first bus ride we start teaching from here if you come to the cross you will find direction from where to go okay so two thoughts huh? climb don't pause or quit climbers experience word fire vision and salvation second little bible verse john 1917 john 1917 carrying his own cross he went out to the place of the skull now this is jesus okay jesus carried a burden i'm asking all of you do you understand the burden he carried physically he carried that cross on his back you must understand when he walked he fell he fell he injured himself he was wounded and yet he decided i'm going i'm going i'm going i'm going right up that mountain Now you think and see okay in your walk of faith are you climbing that mountain or are you stopping halfway he was willing to carry your burdens your suffering ultimate sacrifice 
about a month ago, I think, I think one of the funerals that I did, the Lord gave me this little word. You know, in the world, every second, 1.8 people die. 107, 108 people, every minute die. It can be somebody you love. It can be somebody you know. Do you know where they are going? Do they know where you are going? Can you send them to the right destination? If you carry a burden, if you truly carry a burden, you will not let them die. Not a little story. So my brother-in-law, Risa, all of you all know, uh, when he got married to our family, he was uh, from a different faith. Uh, I tried my optimum best to bring him to the faith. He didn't. And I would scold him. So, cover the hurry up, I don't know. You fool, you will go to hell someday. I'm sorry, but this was who I was because I loved the guy so much. So he's gone to Dubai for the last uh, couple of months and not found the right break in his career. Anyway, on Thursday night, he had an interview and had the interview, the foreign board had asked him, what is the biggest regret in your life? And he says, leaving Qatar, because he was doing really well in Qatar, and he came to Sri Lanka. So leaving Qatar was the biggest regret. And they asked him, what was the best thing in your life? The best decision you made? He said, coming to Sri Lanka and accepting Christ. Amen. Hey, can I hear amen? Next day, he got the job. He got the job. Hey, friends, if you honor my God in front of people, and you as an individual carry a burden for the people you love, and you go give them the gospel, I tell you, their lives will change. Their lives will change. Lives will change. Every second, 1.8 people are going away from this earth. Are you carrying a burden? Because Jesus carried the burden. He carried the burden all the way up. He fell many times. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't take a break. But while he was climbing, like I'm pushing you, somebody pushed a guy called Simon. And Simon supported to carry the cross. Hey, I'm pushing you. Have a burden for the people. Jesus had a burden for you. You must have the same burden for the other people. I want to introduce you a guy called Charles Muli. Charles Muli runs the Muli Children's Foundation in Kenya. A businessman who was broken when he was a child. But he realized when his business was thriving, he has to do something else. This is a quote from him. He says, we are all created in the image of God. Right now, that's the biggest children's foundation in Kenya and across the globe as well. He has so many things. At yeah, this time, I want to honor Pastor Moses for what he does with the children, the widows. We are called to do this, to carry a burden for the people. So just read this guy's story, okay? When you have, just go online, type his name. Amazing individual, the work he does. But if you listen to what he says, he says, that one person that I've helped has been an inspiration to change the country, to go into politics, to do business, to give in to the society, to run a charity. We are looking for Charles Muli here. Are you a Charles Muli? Do you have a burden? Because Jesus had a burden for you. Amen? Third little verse. Luke 23, 41. Now, Jesus is on the mountain top. He's crucified. And he has two thieves on both sides. Okay? Now, this is an inward journey for you as I explain this. As you have done kingdom, as you've understood how we see our king, this should inwardly Change the way you think. Okay? So this guy makes a profound statement. You must understand. On the mountaintop, when you meet Jesus, something happens. You're not the valley person. Your thinking, your perception, your ideas, the way you do life will change. So this thief is saying, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve. Now you see this, okay? One thief is saying the other thief, we are wrong. Are you able to say that? If you are wrong, truly? Ah, we are wrong. He has that revelation on the mount. 
He's in pain. He's crucified. He's about to die. And he's acknowledging we are wrong. We are wrong. And he says, but this man has done nothing wrong. Referring to Jesus. I want you to think this, okay? The people around you, they might have done wrong. But who are you to judge? This is a hospital. We have broken people here. Everybody is coming to climb the mountain. Nobody is superior to anybody else. But we judge. This guy met Jesus for a couple of minutes, dying. And he's saying he did nothing wrong. Genuinely, friends, are you able to say that to somebody else? Maybe they say something to hurt you, do some action against you, whatever. But are you able to see it that way? Are you able to see it from the eyes of Jesus? This man has done nothing wrong. Possible? Is it possible? If you climb the mountain, you can see. Honestly, I tell you, that's why no, our, your pastoral team is different. We see the world very differently. We get bricks and stones and you name it, bombs and time bombs our way. Yeah, but we see the world differently. No, sister? Apostle gets a lot of bombs, right? <laughs> Stephanie is smiling. It's reality. But we know there is an enemy behind the man. There is something happening. Okay? I want to say this little thought. The climber's perception. This is what happens. Huh? Climber's perception is different when you meet Jesus on the mountain. You must have a climber's perception. This thief had what I call a divine illumination in the darkness. It was all dark. And he had this divine moment that he said, this man did nothing wrong. Do you have those divine moments when people do wrong to you to be able to see it that way? Think of this, okay? At this moment, Peter ran away. At this moment, Pilate, Pilate washed his hands. At this moment, people ran away. The other disciples ran away. The priest who was supposed to wait for the Messiah hardened their hearts. No one spoke for Jesus. Just one man. Just one man dying because he had the perception that he met Jesus on the cross. And he truly understood the kingdom. He said, this man did nothing wrong. And he says, I am acknowledging the kingdom. I want to take me to the kingdom. And Jesus responds, truly I tell you, today you will be with me. You understand this? When you climb the mountain and you meet Jesus, you see the world different. Nobody was standing for Jesus, only the man about to die. Because he was on the mountain with Christ himself. I want to introduce you to another person, a man called David Berkowitz. Very different name. Huh? He was known as son of Sam. He comes from the country that Pastor Bobby is from, USA, New York. In the 1970s, he was one of the most brutal people. He shot seven people point blank in the head. Still in prison. Right? This person meets Christ. He's called son of Sam because he used to send letters and they look demonic. Now, if you all are people who work in the spirit, when you look at the eyes of the black and white picture, you would ideally feel what we feel. And when you look at the other eyes, then you'll know what has happened. Something changed in him. He met Christ. When Christ came into his life, he changed. Today, he's the biggest inspiration in that prison. Every person who comes in, meets him, he gives him the word, gives him salvation, brings him to Christ. And most go out and do great in life and in the world. This guy will never come out. But he was forgiven. You understand this? It's very difficult, okay? But that's a climber's perception. Can you forgive? Or do you judge faster? Fourth little verse, Matthew 27, 50. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. 
this little scripture i want you to put a note down as the image the image now i want to take you to the beginning in the beginning god made adam you know kingdom ma huh? you don't understand these pictures adam's rib was bruised a rib taken out from the side and through adam came who eve adam had a injury some kind of a wound god healed it jesus's rib was healed sorry wounded and out of jesus came ecclesia come on give me an amen yes that's you the church the bride of christ okay now when the bride of christ came out what happened the temple needed no more curtain yeah now i want to think okay now we thought you religion now think religion na in religion you always have the deity in the back the curtain and then the priest in front the priest is hiding the deity think ah you all have gone to places no the deity is there the curtain is there and the priest is in front you come meet the priest the priest will do everything you want you give the priest the puja whatever you want to give but that guy is behind the curtain i had the privilege privilege of going to a place called angkor wat in cambodia it's one of the oldest temples in the world uh, and knowing me i kept kept all over the place and i went to this one beautiful monastery right and they had closed it off i crept to the walls and went there and there are about six guys they are washing a deity you can't even go without slippers whatever they are on the fellow's head brushing the guy with a beer in the hand deity is getting a wash yeah next day morning the curtain is come you can do what you want to do hey you don't need to wash a deity man my god is bigger amen right so the curtain was open no more curtain no more religion so that's why we do this no that's why we are pushing you up the mountain you have access to god he let his spirit go you understand there was no physical thing left over there was no spirit left over it was now sent across and on the day of pentecost the spirit came upon every person of you now you have access to god you are the image you are the church you are what everybody else sees you understand now if you work in a wrong manner people will see god in a wrong manner at bethany we want you to meet god at bethany we push you to meet god at bethany we want to be an example of christ that is why we do what we do we don't stop you we don't tell hey we are the only people who know prophecy we are the only people who know scripture no no we push you we push you when we push you because we want you to have the revelation now when you have the revelation what happens we can go one more step higher and pull you one more step higher you understand this little thing we don't want to come there and play here don't say come on let's go let's go let's go up the mountain there is victory there there is something different there let's go up the mountain now when you understand the image you understand that you are put on earth to govern to look after to nurture and if you don't play your role tom dick or harry will play your role in sri lanka if you take statistics for every 14 people of us there is one government servant can you imagine this for every 14 of us we have a government servant no wonder this country is not going forward but why because none of us are doing what we can you are influential you are able super new when i had a chat yesterday do something about it no we got to do because we are the image of christ we are empowered i mean we've had the revelation we've had the spirit we have the word you got to do something different you are the ecclesia if you don't do who will do the priest was needed no more 70 ad the temple was broken holy spirit on pentecost day came upon every human being no more is required now we are believing this is going to happen on the 28th of may when you come to our service so please again reminding you cancel whatever you have 9 am in the morning 
you're coming to a service in borella you're going to meet so many other people who are going to understand what jesus saw at the bottom of the mountain before he climbed okay one more person to introduce desmond tutu now this is image i'm talking about this desmond tutu story this is not the image of christ south africa was a black country with black dominance the white people brought the gospel there they said close your eyes let us pray and when they got up they were running the country that's not the image of christ that's not the image of christ people have to see you people have to embrace the faith people have to catch hold of what you're saying jesus died for everybody of us forgiveness is unlimited one more little story okay there was a young girl who messed up her life about 16 years took the money started smoking drinking whatever fought with the parents said i'm going away so she went away and life is messed up no hope she sends back a postcard mom dad i know you can't forgive me i know you can't you will not accept me because i've done so wrong but i'm writing this postcard if you get it on monday i'm going to get in a bus i'm going to pass your house if there is a white color flag on the mango tree at the entrance of your house i'm going to get down i'm going to believe you have forgiven me but if there is no white color flag i'm going to go so anyway this girl comes she gets into the bus from peta she's crying weeping all day so everybody in the bus is asking the story and by the time they are coming close to the bed everybody in the bus now knows the story okay the mom and dad are now talking they got the postcard they said you know okay let's hang one so the dad goes and hangs one then the mom says you know what what if a squirrel comes what if the wind comes what if it goes let's put two and the father says but if the bus is going fast they might not see two let's put three and by the end of the evening they had put bed sheets and pillow cases and you name it on the tree and when the bus came close the entire bus shouted you are forgiven hey this is my christ to you you guys are forgiven okay now let me summarize the little sermon worship team you can come up when you understand the image okay i'm doing now a bit of a flip if you understand the image if you understand who you are you will always 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 have a climber's perception you will see the world in high definition in color very differently and when you see the world differently you will carry a burden that is why we do friendship that is why we do cells that is why we are doing evangelical events that's why even the aurdu utsave these guys are and do we want to do some kind of a evangelical event you'll carry a burden and when you are a person carrying burden you're going to experience the word in a different manner you want to have the fire of god coming upon you you're going to see visions differently you're going to experience giving salvation last friday also we had eight people giving their lives to christ i'm so happy supun and anu decided to come and be on our prayer team so i asked both of them what happened uh, and supun said i was sitting up there and i prayed for five people and pastor all five people came to receive prayer all five people came this is how god works if you are willing to move he will use you he will use you in a way you cannot even imagine and my friends if you do all this you will never quit you will never pause you will keep on climbing and climbing and climbing amen